So I've got my wool bats here, my taupe coloured wool bats, and I'm just going to take off some strips. And what we're going to do, very much like we did earlier on with the other colours, is we're just going to place some strips. I'm just going to tear it apart so we don't have them all going in the same direction. And I'm just going to place this into the centre of our mushroom like so. I'm going to take my fine needles and I'm just going to felt this down into place. And it doesn't need to be overly neat. And you want to try, it's a bit tricky now because obviously this round part of the mushroom is downside. So it's a bit wobbly. It's not as stable as when it was around this way. So we just need to just be careful of our fingers as we felt this part into position. Once you've kind of got this tacked down a bit, you can let go and then just felt it down as you normally would. So I'm sort of holding it by the side here and then holding it down onto the mat. So just that initial phase of getting the wool on so it doesn't come away. You just need to be a bit cautious of your fingers. And you could always wear uh, needle felting finger gloves. If you're new to needle felting especially, I definitely recommend them because it just saves a lot of pain I can I can tell you from experience that um, I did stab myself a fair few times when I started out. I mean, I, I occasionally do stab myself now. Undoubtedly jinxed myself now, and I'm going to stab myself probably in a minute. But um, but it's definitely worth getting those finger gloves whilst you get used to the process of needle felting and where to position your hands and your needles as you're doing it. I think as long as you're felting down into the mat you should be fine but it's just it's quite a good precautionary tool to have in place especially if it's children that's doing it I would I would 100% say if you've got like a child that wants to get into needle felting um, it's definitely worth getting some needle felting finger gloves and my daughters are seven and five I've had a go in the past and they just don't have the attention to be able to kind of focus solely on the thing that they're felting and they're kind of constantly looking here there and everywhere and I mean without guidance they would definitely hurt themselves so I think finger gloves are a, a good investment okay I'm just going to get a bit more just to cover over any white areas and like this little area here that looks a bit wonky. So I'm just gonna, and I'll be back in a second once this has all been added. So the underside of your mushroom should eventually look something like this. We've got this nice kind of mushroomy, taupey wool back color that's been placed onto the underside. What we wanna do next is we wanna find the central point, rough central point of the underside of our mushroom. So I'm gonna say it's about here. So I'm just gonna mark it with my single medium needle. So I know roughly where it is. I'm then going to take my um, I'm then going to take my fine twisted needles, and I'm just going to do a line going across on a diagonal into the bottom end of my mushroom cup, the underside, I guess you could call it. And I'm just going to start working out roughly where I want all of these to go. And we're just creating that, that frilling now. I'm just using my medium needle initially just to mark it all out. You want to go around the entire mushroom marking it all out and then once you've done that you're going to swap to your medium needles and then you're just going to felt that down into position so we're getting quite a nice heavy line here but be cautious again with going through to the other side because you'll undo all your hard work on the sort of the top end of your mushroom cup so just be cautious when you're felting with your medium needles that you're not going down too deeply but you're going deep enough to leave a nice indentation there I'm just going to do the same on the other side And once again, you just want to keep going all the way around like we did a moment ago with our fine needles until you've got some lovely thrilling on the underside of your mushroom. So I'll be back in a second once I've added all of mine. 
Right, so I've gone around all of the base of my mushroom and I've added my lines to create these segments here. Now you can make them as narrow as you want to and I'd say that if you make lots of very narrow segments, it's gonna make it look more authentic. Um, I've just kind of added um, a few slightly larger ones purely for time purposes. But if you've got the time, I would go around and I'd just add some really fine ones and you can get a really lovely effect with that. So I'm just gonna move my mushroom cup out of the way now and we're gonna make the stalk. To make my mushroom stalk, I've got my taupe coloured wall bats again and I've got my kebab stick. So all I'm going to do is place my kebab stick over the top of my wall bats. So I've got roughly about two inches sort of exposed on one end and then the length, the rest of the length sort of coming down towards me. I'm then going to fold this top end here over the top of the kebab stick. And then I'm just going to fold this or wrap this around my kebab stick. And I'm going to focus, because we're making a mushroom stalk, on adding the majority of my wall to the base. And then I'm just going to, once it's all wrapped round, pull it off, move that out of the way. I'm going to take my fine needles and I'm just going to felt that down so it can't unravel. Turn that round any loose ends into the main core of the stalk that we're making. Like so. And once it's all secured into place, I'm then just going to felt everything down properly. And what I'm actually going to do is take a bit more of that wall bats, place it sort of about halfway down our stalk, and then I'm just going to wrap some more of it around what will be the bottom of our mushroom stalk or toadstool stalk, like so. And then just felt that down because I want this to be quite wide. Um, because what I've noticed when I look at a toadstool is that the, the bottom end of our toadstool tends to be the wider part because that's the part that's growing from the ground. So you just want to keep farting it down until you get to the stage where you've got something that looks like this. So as you can see here, we've got the narrower part at the top and then it widens off as it goes down to the bottom of the stalk. I've also flattened off the end as well. And I've done that just by using my needles, holding my, my fingers well out of the way, holding the narrowest part of the stalk down onto the felting mat and then just felting on a downward angle into the base of that mushroom just to create that flattened base so that we can stand it up or, or stick it down onto some kind of platform once it's finished. So the next thing I want to do is bring my mushroom cup back in and we're going to secure this stalk into place onto our mushroom cup. So I'm going to hold this down, I'm going to take my fine needles and I'm just going to go into the side of my, um, my stalk and then I'm going to felt downwards into the base of the cup of my mushroom. So again I'm felting on a downwards angle. You could also use glue to stick this down, but I don't think you get the same finish because it's not properly integrated into the rest of the mushroom. And I just like being able to felt it down into position because then it, it draws those fibers from the stalk into the mushroom cup and makes it one, like the Spice Girls song. When two become one. I'm really not selling my vocal skills to you this morning, but to be fair, it is now quarter to five, so you have to forgive me. I haven't properly warmed up before I before I chortle my uh, my best Emma Bunton impression. <laughs> So you want to keep going around and doing this, turning your mushroom so you're getting a nice even felt. And what I'm doing, I'm really trying to get my needles down on that angle and then I'm felting down from the center, the in internal center of my, um, my stalk here, down into the center of my mushroom cup. So I get a really nice contact with the wall. I'm just gonna test that. That's pretty secure. A bit more. And there we go. 
So there you have it. Your mushroom is complete. And how easy was that tutorial? It's really straightforward and you can get something looking really cool and authentic just by layering those colors and getting that lovely ombre look. So I really hope you enjoyed that. And I hope I've inspired you to maybe create some kind of a fairy scene with toadstools or just have them on their own. I think they look great as a collective sort of together um, to create a bit of a, a mushroom fungus toadstool kind of scene, a woodland scene. So I really hope you enjoyed that. If you did if you could like this video because it just gets it out there to more people that are interested in needle felting i will see you tomorrow with more needle felting hints and tips if you could subscribe to my channel that would be amazing as well because again it just gets my videos out to more and more people that really want to start the art of needle felting so take care and i will see you tomorrow with more needle felting hints and tips bye